Hi there, welcome back. Brand new day, brand new video. Alexander here signing in for Indigo Light. I want to begin by sending you all my love and my gratitude for, for being here, for your presence. And today we are talking about disclosure. A very important, very pertinent, very interesting, very mesmerizing topic. In the last, uh, I believe, I'll say a month or so, we've had two kind of major disclosure events. One in the United States, one in Mexico that have prompted this video to be made. There's a lot of things I wanted to talk about in regards to context, expectations, and so on, as someone who's been following uh, the Disclosure Movement and the Disclosure Project, actually, by Stephen Greer, Greer from 2001. Um, and somebody who's been kind of enthralled with the idea of aliens since I was, I don't know, four or five years old. It's very commonplace in the, I won't call it New Age, I'll call it spiritual society or community online that uh, extraterrestrials exist. They're part of our DNA, they're part of who we are, and so on. So, you know, we're very open overall to this topic. It's not something that is... But we're always looking for physical evidence and for corroboration and for validation, um, for good or for bad. We have been hearing about this topic for very, very long. If you grew up in the 80s like I did, you had E.T. on television and a whole slew of other shows, the space wars, the space race, and so on. So your eyes were to the skies and you were open to the idea that there was life out there. Or you were at least wondering about it. And I believe according to the last polls, I think 85% of the planet believes in this. There are um, viewings of UFOs all over the world, their stories absolutely all over the world, all over the world. A topic I've been following for a very long time, maybe 30 years in total. Um, so it's very close to my heart and I wish things were revealed. They're not yet where we want them to be, but perhaps we're not ready and it's a whole discussion, ideological and otherwise. Um, and I decided to make this video because in the last month, um, there's been a kind of a disclosure event in the States and a bigger disclosure event in Mexico, which I don't know if many of you have heard about. So, and, and I want to talk also about things that came before because we shouldn't act like these are the two <clears throat> main ones. Um, there have been a lot over the years. You just need to know where to look. And because of different times and different uh, media, things were publicized or not. So there's been a, I'll call it, it's called a UAP kind of meeting. I think it was at the Senate or the Congress in the United States. There was a guy called, I'm going to paraphrase all this. I don't have any file. I made some notes, but I don't have anything in front of me with names, but I'll go by memory. Um, there was a military member. I think his name is Grouch, Grouch. Um, and he was basically testifying that, you know, UFOs exist. Uh, some UFOs had crashed, were recovered, there were bodies in them, and so on and so forth. A, an event happened in the Mexican Congress a few days ago. I actually watched all of it, uh, direct live. Somebody sent me a link, kind of happened by serendipity, and I just started watching all of it. And it was basically these, uh, the divulging of two mummified bodies, one with, egg, with eggs in it that's according to all the um, the DNA tests of junk DNA and so on and so forth, are not from this planet. They're both a thousand years old. And, you know, kind of knew about this. Stephen Greer had covered some of these things. There's a lot of talk pro, there's a lot of talk against. Some people say it's a conspiracy, it's not real, and so on and so forth. It's all good. Um, you know, we're trying to achieve a place where we divulge this information. If you're looking into these things for the last 10 to 20 years, especially before social media, there was a lot of material that was published. There were a lot of whistleblowers. Um, in the early days, I remember finding entire plants online from weird websites. This is in the late 90s for the Dulce base, which was a, I think it was a base that was affiliated with Area 51. All of the schematics, just information that wasn't very conspiracy theoristy. It was too detailed, too militarily archived to be that way. And re I remember reading the whole kind of document. Um, so there's a lot of things out there if you knew where to look and if you took the time. Um, in 2001, there is this guy called Dr. Stephen Greer, who's big in this topic. Um, and he created what was called the Disclosure Project, which was basically, I think it was the, the American Press Building or something like that. And he brought in 
a few hundred whistleblowers from the military, from generally from the military, people that were older now and that just didn't care anymore and they were just telling their stories. And if you took the time to watch those very long proceedings, um, it felt like a lot of it was genuine. I'm sure there was some ego, some imagination somewhere here or there, whatever. But they were just people testifying to what they had seen. And I'm not going to go too much into conspiracies or anything like that because that's not what I do. But it, I will just say that it is my understanding after 20 to 30 years of research, also in the early days, before social media existed, before all, people were so influenced, you could just sit in front of your computer and go and fish. And the internet had information for you and it wasn't about getting validated from others or putting it out there it was just there for your own uh, consumption okay so there was a lot of there were a lot of things it is my personal understanding that whatever other species have always been here part of them are our dna uh, seeders they've seeded us uh, others communicate and cooperate with some governments for positive and nefarious purposes but bottom line they're here they're among us a lot of these movies they've watched in Hollywood that basically infer that are a kind of a preparation model so that we're more used to the idea that, you know, even the movie Men in Black is based on, it's a, you know, it's a depiction of Hollywood, but it's based on uh, special programs of monitoring and so on that, to my understanding, again, I have no proof, nothing, uh, are real. Okay. Um, in my book, I've chronicled experiences also with the Arcturians. In my book, Confessions of an Indigo Child, it's on the website and so on. Um, communications and some physical kind of uh, connection also with the Arcturians. These are some of the, the things I've worked on. And if you think about it, if you are able to tap into consciousness, you're able to connect with everything everywhere. So it's not as foreign as you would think it is. It's, this, it's, this, it's um, related to the idea of God, if you think about it. If you think of God, the big G-O-D, the white man with a beard, uh, it's an external concept because you've been taught it through religion, through the lens of religion. If you think of a universal consciousness that has no name, no shape, no gender, and it's just kind of everything everywhere and nothing all at once, then it's much easier for you through meditation to connect with them. And I would think the same of these species. Okay, and it's, I don't think it's by happenstance that there are stories from literally all over the globe. You can watch tons of documentaries and you kind of aggregate. And even if 10% of those or 5% of those are true, then we have to ask some questions. And it's not, you know, it's not a secret that our governments like to keep things on the wraps in order to control. Again, not a, this is not a conspiracy. It's just basic logic. Hysteria doesn't do well for the economy. We are an economically motivated society and... Let's think about that truly. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, there was between the Americans and the Mexicans coming up with this information and putting it out there. And of course, people are going to jump and they're naysayers and whatnot. That's fine. Um, but first of all, the expectation that this would change something massive immediately is something I would steer away from. If you look, and I'm going to go into that in a sec, if you look through the cracks, through the lines, whatever you want to say, the, uh, these things have happened before, and I'm going to mention some of those that are more important, uh, perhaps even than the Mexican Congress. And, and it happens, and people did not necessarily react in such a manner. Um, I think there's definitely a preparation because the sightings are irrefutable. They're happening all over the world, and we are increasingly ready for that, okay, just as an idea. I don't think that we're going to have any saucers landing anywhere and coming up and saying we're, you know, we're ready. There's a, a show, I think it was called Childhood's End. Uh, I don't know if you're into sci-fi, you've watched it. If you're not, you haven't. And it's basically aliens coming to Earth and it takes them 50 years to reveal themselves because humans are not ready for their real form. They look malevolent, malevolent. they turn out to be benevolent. Um, I don't think we're there yet, to be honest. I never got an inclination. So so as great as these things are, they're preparing the ground and that's fantastic. And they're more in the media than they were before. The sightings, if you were to just kind of use your basic discernment and cut through all of the BS, you would be able to reach the same conclusion. You wouldn't need the validation of the media. 
the Mexican thing was a big deal because they took bodies out and they said, we tested the DNA and so on. The DNA and all these things are being tested again. We'll see what happens with that. But it was interesting because it's the first ballsy move in, uh, in, in ever, forever. I've been looking at these things. I wanted to mention some other things if you wanted, and you can do your own homework on this. In regards to folklore and lore, you can look at the Dogon tribes of Africa, tribe of Africa, uh, that have a long history of communication with extraterrestrials. It's in their folklore. Uh, the Hopi in, uh, in America, which is a Native, Native American tribe that have a long history of communication with extraterrestrials. Um, and, and all these things have always been there. You can find uh, carvings on walls all over the world with spaceships. You can find paintings from the Renaissance with spaceships flying in the sky. And if you look at them clearly, it's undeniable what they are. Um, so another, I wanted to mention a couple of things that have happened that many of you may or may not know about. Um, and if I butcher any names or I paraphrase too much, forgive me, it's okay. It's just the point and the intention that counts. Quite a few years ago, there was an ex-Minister of Defense of Canada called, I think his name was Paul Hellier, I remember the last name, uh, that went on uh, some documentaries and I think even on the news and he was talking about the fact that the governments have knowledge of extraterrestrials, uh, they also cooperate with them in regards to certain technologies and whatnot. So that was the first, and it was a big deal because it was the first um, announcement from a senior member of government of a G8 country or G20 country. So that was a big deal. Another person I can mention, which is close to my heart for many reasons, is Chaim Eshed. Uh, he was one of the pioneers of the Israeli uh, space program. He's really considered one of those old professorial people that are old school and know everything in regards to this sphere. A man of the mind, a man of the science, not somebody who's a bit woo-woo. Uh, who wrote in a book, actually, you can Google it online, his last name is E-S-H-E-D, um, about what's going on. And his words were that uh, there is open cooperation with the Galactic Federation between governments and extraterrestrials. There is cooperation militarily, you know, as in we get uh, information and technology from them and they get stuff from us. Um, and also that there are bases on Mars and other things like that. You can have a look into that. But that was a big announcement. That was in the Israeli newspapers. It appeared a bit in the U.S. newspapers. Considering the caliber of the person, even though it was one person, it's still a big deal. And that's, to the best of my knowledge, I, I put it on my, uh, on my Instagram, one of the channels a while back, whenever it came out. Uh, that was a pretty big announcement, along with Mr. Hellier. Um, and still... You know, it went kind of under the wraps. Um, there was also a, a video by, um, we all know Putin, right? So he had this kind of underling Medvedev who became president afterwards. So there's actual video of him online from, I don't know how many years ago, where he talks about the fact that when you become the leader of the state, you get this suitcase. And within the suitcase is the knowledge about our cousins from space and our relationship with them and so on. It was just, kind of thing that slipped during an interview or that he put in there deliberately. Um, and the last example I would mention, this is just to say that these things have happened before. It's just out there and sometimes they make it easy for you to look for and sometimes they do not, but you need to do your own homework. There is a website called Vault. It's an FBI website. I think it's the vault.gov. This was years ago again. And there was an actual report or two in there about a crash. I think it was Roswell. Again, I'm doing all this from memory, so you can do your research. Um, and in the reports on their official website was a report of a craft with three small humanoid bodies in there with suits that are shiny, you know, like uh, aluminum-like. Um, they were human, but smaller, smaller versions of us. Uh, and, you know, I've read all of these things. There were some things on WikiLeaks as well. There's a lot of information floating around. Um, there's a guy called, I think he's Billy Meyer, Will Meyer, a guy from the 1970s in Switzerland, who used to communicate to the Pleiadians. There's a lot of old school things. I, would, I think it would be better to dive into the old school things before people were, quote unquote, corrupted by a lot of the social media and the need to invent in order to be validated. Let's assume that 50% of it is BS, 
or maybe 90% of it is BS, but if we get a good 10% out of there, that's good enough. What I'm trying to say through this video is that we've always seen disclosure, or at least for the last 30, 40 years. Things have been coming up, things are revealed, you just need to be open-minded and know where to look. It's a big deal if a government goes, or on official government ground, somebody goes through a revelation. We're definitely getting closer to that point, of course. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily sit and anticipate that within the next year, we're going to see saucers landing, aliens coming out and saying hello. There are many species of aliens, if you're into this stuff. Um, many different types, benevolent, not so benevolent. We need to kind of focus on our own evolution. This is a, what I'm trying to focus a lot on the channel is to, to focus on our own evolution and focus on our own disclosure efforts. If you follow Stephen Greer, and you may, you may resonate with them or not, it doesn't matter. Um, he has a prospect of ve vectoring in, which is the same, I think it's the similar or the same as remote viewing of Ingo Swan, who used to be one of the... Um, there's this movie called Men Who Stare at Goats. It was about the psychic, the psychic program of the CIA in the 60s, 70s. So there was this guy, this is official stuff, you can go and Google it. There was this guy called Ingo Swan, I believe he's still alive. Um, and he had invented this method called remote viewing, which was basically a style of meditation where you would be able to leave and go into the astral and vector in on a point. And this point could be on this planet or another. Okay, so uh, Stephen Greer was using kind of the same methods to vector in on spacecraft and communicate and whatnot. From my experience, you can do almost anything with meditation and consciousness and on your own. And that would be your own disclosure, that would be your own validation, and the world can catch up when it's ready, because there are a lot of things to consider. Um, the fact that a government does a small gesture is amazing, but that gesture in itself, if those bodies are legitimate and everything is fine, is still saying, hey, these are guys from somewhere else that we find from a thousand years ago. It does nothing for us today, because we don't know what's going on today. And that's the kind of deliberate, subversive move. Instead of saying, here they are, they're in the next building, say hello, this is what they look like, their name is so-and-so. So, you know, an effort is better than no effort, but I would be careful with conspiracies that this is happening now or that there's some... I saw uh, people sending me emails about false flag operations, blah, 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 and there's just a lot of things going on at the same time. But... Uh, you know, this the idea of this channel was always self-sustenance and discernment. It wasn't about what others say or do. So there's always going to be a lot of stuff going on around the world. If people come out and say things publicly, that's amazing. We have to be more transparent. We have to lift the veil. But again, through meditation, and I can attest to this personally, and I'll, I'll say why in a second, we can really put some communication out there and see what happens. And there are a lot of people in this community that know what this is about and other skeptics that may call this BS, and that's fine. This is a weird topic. It's, I, I find it weird to believe that you're alone in the universe, um, mathematically, if you consider how many planets and galaxies there are, but okay, to each, and to each his or her own, that's fine. Um, I remember when I started, I studied, I started studying with my teacher, we started talking about the idea of channeling, which is basically nothing magical, it's just an inner meditation. And if you're able to clear out the ego and use the proper filters, you can receive. That's all. You receive your information because you have other information from lifetimes and whatnot. I remember uh, getting a lot of downloads and knowledge that time. And I would go to these bookstores and I would always go to the metaphysical um, aisle. And more than a few times, something literally fell into my lap. And one of those books was um, We the Arcturians. I believe the woman that wrote it is Barbara Marciniak. If she's not, please forgive me. I remember a lot of things, but purely by memory, this is not a, a historical channel. So I do make mistakes. Uh, so We the Arc we the, Arctur we, comma, the Arcturians. And I remember going home. I don't know why I bought that book. I read all of it in a night. And the next day I was, you know, I used to meditate a lot to practice. So six months of hardcore meditation every day for hours. And there it was. Communi something happened, communication. And that became uh, a thing. This was in 2009, 10. 
And that became an open channel of communication. And I kept it to myself for a very long time because it was very esoteric. Um, I, you know, there are other groups as well. It's just, it's basically like manifestation or whatnot. You put your intentions out there. And if they're clean and you're not trying to be a contrarian or a self-serving individual and you have some kind of karmic past with some group of individuals that are off planet or not physical, you can as well get a response. I've chronicled a lot of this stuff in my book. You can check it out. I'm not going to go into all of that now because some of it is very esoteric. Um, so it's only if you're interested. But I very much believe in these things. And I believe that we should really make the effort as a society or as a community that is into esotericism to dive within in order to get out there. And whatever happens in the physical world is great but we must not be reactive. The problem with humans is their reactivity. We wait for things to happen to us. We wait for things to come to us instead of doing the work. Um, and that's, that's more harmful than not at many times. So that's what I wanted to cover for today. Um, first of all, I invite you to subscribe to the channel if you resonate. Share so that others can benefit from this. Um, you can check out my website at indigolightlove.com. I have another message in a sec, so do stay tuned. And you can send me an email at indigolights2222 at gmail.com for any questions, sessions, whatever. And you can also comment on the video. Um, disclosure has been happening for a very long time. It's at least 34 years. And it's really in stages. All the movies of the 80s and 70s, all the sci-fi, that was the beginning. Okay. People are throwing little pebbles in. Um, and now we have more official things happening. What happens in 5, 10 years? I don't know. But I, from my, the message that I got years ago was that the truest disclosure of the kind would come from the individual, not the government. Because the government had agendas and considerations that were unclean. And the individual would just dive into it because they were tired of being withheld the truth. If you think of life on this planet um, with extraterrestrial components and without, it does change a lot of things. It changes a lot of religious stuff. It changes a lot of, you know, there are beings like us out there. Maybe they have better technology. Maybe we don't need fuel and this and that and the other. And if they're kind, that's even more amazing. So it's a paradigm shift that we're not alone and it would change everything. As I mentioned from Chaim Eshed, um, from his book, um, we have communication openly with the Galactic Federation of Light. I'm sure many of you know what that is. It's just like a United Nations and our governments exchange information and whatnot. And hopefully one day we can move into a place where we're a part of that. If not, doesn't matter, but we can still do a lot as individuals and we should not expect change to happen from outside. We should do the work. So if you're into this topic, go online, ask your guidance to uh, filter what is right for you, do some research and see where you get. And then you have your meditation efforts and your messages and your intentions you can put out and you'd be surprised what happens. If you resonate, you can also check out my book, Confessions of an Indigo Child. It's on uh, Amazon. I can put the link also in the description. Um, and there's going to be a lot of information in there that you may or may not resonate with. That's it for now. That's regarding disclosure. And we have another really, really cool video coming very soon. What I'm doing is I'm doing different topics now. I'm not going to do any new moon or full moon or any of that stuff that is done. Uh, different topics that pertain to different groups of individuals. So you'll have your pick. You'll have your, your, your pick at some point in the, uh, the progression of videos coming out. I send you my deepest love and gratitude. And thank you so much for tuning in.